Good evening and welcome to the February 28, 2024 meeting of the Town of Grace Zoning Board of Appeals. Anthony Gravatz is excused from tonight's meeting because of an illness. Georgia Woodbury? Here. Derek Shirley? Here. Brad Fogg is here. We have a quorum of three people. There are no minutes uh, to approve tonight because we're still holding minutes from right. previous actions. A new business. We have Robin and Joanna Ritchie are requesting a reconsideration of the notice of decision dated December 27th, 2023 regarding the reduction of a 50 foot required front setback to 33 feet in order to install a 50 foot right of way accessing the rear of their parcel for the purpose of building up to one additional housing unit located on their property at 134 Long Hill Road, tax map, a great tax map, 064042004-000 in a rural residential and agricultural district. Is there a motion to open a public hearing for this uh, item? Georgia Woodbury, I move that we open this for discussion. Second. Derek Shirley seconds. Derek seconds. All those in favor? Okay, who's here representing uh, Robert and Joanna Ritchie? Step up to the podium, please. Identify yourself. Good evening. I'm Robert Ritchie. Okay, Mr. Ritchie. Uh, what's up? Well, after receiving the paperwork and reading through it, I realized that it says for the purpose of building up up to one additional housing unit. And is that not what you requested in your appeal to build a house, one additional house? I requested a setback variance to allow a right of way through to build yeah. one house. I don't believe it was to build one house. Hold on. That's what it says. It was to allow access. To build another house. To build another house. That's one. That's what your paperwork says. We grant you what you will ask for. Okay. Can we remove that? Do we have to go through a whole new filing? Well, I guess a whole it really request? <clears throat> what I would want to know is why? Why? Because I could potentially want to sell another house lot. I may not be able to afford to get to the top of the property where I want to be, and I may have to build another one in order to get there. And then another one after that, or just one more house, or? Possibly. Do you need to go to the planning board to do a preliminary plan for a development? If I, were to go sub, if I were to go to subdivision, I would have to do that, yes. But you're asking, but for, I don't, you're asking for an easement Correct. to build a driveway, and we granted you that. We grant you an easement to access the property to build an additional dwelling unit. Correct. That's, that's what you asked for. And now you're here asking, well, I might want to do this, I might want to do that. And that's not very clear for us, and I'm not sure. Well, that I'm, I guess I'm asking, do I need to apply for a, a variance in different wording? Yeah. I would advise that you probably go to the code enforcement office or the planning office to discuss with them what you'd like to do, and if at that point in time, an appeal is needed. They will help you uh, word that appeal or write that appeal, or they may advise you that you might have to go to the planning board to seek or, or submit or get some type of plan for a development. If you're thinking, well, maybe I'll build a third house or maybe I'll build a fourth house after that then you, you come it into a development as opposed to just an easement for a driveway, so to speak. I mean, I, I'm not sure what you what you want us to reconsider because we granted your appeal. And well, I guess if I... Just clarify, you're saying that you're not going to 
Like before. Yeah. yeah. Um, you were good if, you, yeah if you don't mind, uh, oh, Mindson, code officer. Um, I think that it's, it's, it's important for you folks to know that if you did grant a variance for a driveway, a driveway by definition can only serve two dwelling units. At that point, he would be then required to go, because it's subdivision law anyways, he would be required to go to planner board if he wanted to do that, that third house anyways. So that would be the mechanism for him. Um, so, and, and I think that's what he's asking is he has this lot that can support more than one dwelling unit and feels that he's locked to one dwelling unit with this right of way. If he asked for a driveway, a driveway by definition can only serve two dwelling units. After that, he's gonna be in subdivision land even if, and we would even need to look at when he constructed his other house, when this new house is gonna be built, and if he's still within that five year period of planning board world. Well, the current easement was granted to mm -hmm. allow, to reduce the, his current driveway. His current, so it's, so it's front, setback. front setback. Front setback. Front yeah. setback to a current driveway. Right. He's asked for the easement to build an additional dwelling unit, 50 foot. Is his original driveway part of that consideration? You just gave the right of way. He gave him the right of way. He gave him the right feet. of way. But, when but I'm just letting you know that, but by definition, of, but you know, if for by definition, if we're talking about a driveway, it can only serve two houses. So is that the first house and the and the new one he wants to build? No, if the if the first house is is the first house served by yours. Yes. It would be served by this? Yes. Yeah, so if it's a driveway, well, it can no, only serve... No, because the driveway comes in before I need the setback. But it's off so the same be a different, driveway. Yeah, I'd have to look at the configuration of it. But I just wanted to make sure that you were aware of that when you're considering it, because at some point, the, he's, he's going to be kicked into another regulatory world that's going to monitor what he's doing with his land up there. I remember correctly, if I remember correctly, it was, we did discuss one additional building. Yes, when I went back and watched the yeah. video, I, um, you did say that, yes. Yes. I'm not and arguing I, that. That was part I, of I, our discussion. It didn't click at the time until I read it. And it's right away. It's not really. What's well, no, Just like when I said so to build another house. I guess. So I guess, let me, let me ask you this. So were you asking to allow them to let you build an additional house. A, a third house. Right, he's got his, well, you, I guess you, you, you want to do one. I'm not asking for a specific number, I'm just asking for an easement, and I guess I said in my application to build another house as an example of why I wanted to get through there. I don't know. This... Can anybody answer this question? Is his original driveway if we get to a third house or more, his original access off Long Hill Road was his original driveway. Would that then be considered part of a road if he were to build a third house? It would all be it would all be how the configuration is. If it's serving two houses, it would then become a road and not a driveway. It becomes, it becomes so the first house way. doesn't count. The, the existing house doesn't count. If it if it's if it's serving that house and the house out back, yeah, it does. Right <clears throat> and then it would become a private way for a third house. So should I name this as a road? No, we can talk about that after. I think you will for E nine one one purposes if this happens. But we can talk about that. Yeah, it's two houses on that. Okay. Foot, and it's a road, private road. It's no longer a driveway. I'm thinking it would be, instead of us taking a vote and saying, no, we're not going to reconsider this, which would kick it to a whole another level in terms of either going to the town council or going to court or whatever.
whatever he might want to do, that he would draw this request and meet with somebody in planning and code enforcement to determine which way he should go so that there's a definitive plan for us to look at and to better define if he puts in a third house would it then be a road because there are other roads in town that only have two houses on them and they albeit they're private roads they're roads considered roads in that development area and we have one member of our board that's in that situation georgia Humphrey, uh, georgia where there are two homes on her road which was initially serviced by the same driveway but it's now considered a road well, it's a road by E one E nine one one standards. Right, it's a road. By definition and zoning ordinance, a driveway serving two dwelling units, but it needs to be named for emergency response purposes. But in, in our case, so. I don't want to put either the zoning board or the planning board at conflict with each other. So, could I make a suggestion? Is is possibly tabling this, and in, in allow in leaving it open and allowing me to meet with him, and then. Letting him come back, or would you want him to withdraw it? Well, I think we could table it as long as there's a, 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 if you will, a written plan or reason for the reconsideration, not just a, well, I'm thinking about building a third house. Yeah, yeah, so could we table it, and then if he decides to withdraw it, he could do that in a future date. But this way, it gives him some time to come up with, to come in and meet with me again. It gives us some time to meet with the planning staff, probably together, and help him come up and define a plan for what he would like to do. And it gives him the option to come back or it gives him the option to withdraw. I would prefer that he has the option to come back with additional information or documentation that would lead us to better mediate sure, I understand. what's going on. I understand. I mean, I don't want to snap to a decision and Two months later, have you come back? So well, I want to go to the third house. Well, how far you know, I mean, so I, let's, yeah, let's, I bought let's this property that. as an investment for my retirement. Yeah. I don't know what I want to do with the property. I want to live there. So as for me to come up with a plan, I don't have a plan. Well, you, you I know plan, I want to build your, again. Your plan might be putting a development in, and if the plan is in place, that doesn't mean you have to do the development. If you just want to do one additional house, you can do one additional house. You don't have to do the development, I don't believe, unless time would run out or expire, but by then you may have in place what you want to have in place. If I'm so if, if, if this house was built 17 feet further from the line? The, the, the house that we approved these in the full last time? Yes. If you built it within... It, and it was properly beyond the 50 feet. I so mean, would I still have to go through all that if I wanted to build another house? Your original home? Yes, the original one that. So his home, if this was not. If it was further back, less than 50 to, feet. No, you wouldn't. Well, that house is there. Yeah, that's what he's talking about right now. If okay. that were beyond the 50 it. feet, if he still, would yep. he still have to get a. So well, the thing is, the easement was granted for this house, no, not this one. No, no, I know, but he's saying would he have to go through this? Yeah, I don't either. I don't either. Plan in there because I need to find out what the process is. If this was back okay. beyond the 50 feet, would I have to go through all this? Going forward, and I can't say this, I don't know. I have a lot of questions. I don't think there's one answer. Okay. 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 Questions that yeah, we can answer those questions. questions. Have to have it tabled. I think the uh, under. I, I would move you know, the I table would, and come back at a time that you want to, that you're ready to, to present, if there's a you. need to present at the, that point in time. So. Okay. Yeah, I have a lot of questions around it as well that I want to talk to, the planning staff, um, about in you know about potential development and I'd like to just have a better understanding of his options before I advise your board and advise him and, and well I, th I think we need to know that I yeah I do too and, and, and that's something that I have questions that I need answered before okay. I can answer yours uh, 60 days two months or do you want to go shorter than that 
Could you give him? I'm, could you give him? Could you give him three? A point of information. Yeah. You don't have to set a time limit if you table it. Yeah. Can we just table it? We'll table it. Anybody? Motion to table. Anybody? Derek Shirley. Derek Shirley makes a motion to table. Is there a second? Georgia Woodbury second. Any discussion? No. Table. Okay. Thank you. So no, well, thank you. We, need, we need to get the whole package together so yep. we don't inadvertently. <laughs> Our next item of business is Mark and Mary Bourgeois. Bourgeois are requesting a variance appeal to increase 20 feet of allowed appeal to increase 20 feet of allowed structure height to 28 feet located at 32 North Raymond Road, Gray Main Tax Map 0131070190000 located in a limited residential and shoreland zone. Motion open the meeting. The hearing, uh, Derek Turner motions to open the hear public hearing. A second. Georgia Woodbury, second. All those in favor? We are open. Mr. Bourgeois, do you want to step up to the... Oh, they are fast. <laughs> <laughs> step, right up, step right up there and uh, fill us in on what you want to do or why you're looking for a, an appeal. Yeah, so I, I put together some documentation and I planned on kind of walking through that, if that's okay. That's fine. Um, okay. In, uh, in that process, Mr. Bourgeois, as you read through here, there are... Uh, four primary requirements that we have to look at yep. to say yes or no. And uh, if you can answer those ones to the best of your ability, that would be great. If we have questions, we'll ask for questions, and afterwards we'll ask for comments from the public, and okay. we'll move along. Great. Go Thank easy. You. Go easy on me. I've never done this before. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, my wife and I have owned this property for about uh, 19 years. And it's, um, it's a, a single, single family dwelling that has two bedrooms. And both of the bedrooms are in the basement. And uh, you can see from the picture on the first slide, um, it's a little bit like a uh, split level. So the picture on the first uh, page is the lakeside view of it. And just from a, for, um, just for perspective, the first floor actually I measured uh, today when I was at the house. It's like five foot two to the first floor um, flooring, and it's about 15 feet to the peak of the house as it exists now. Okay. Um, so, I, you know, um, I guess lucky us, we're one of the few people on the lake that have a full basement. Um, and uh, it hadn't, hasn't been much of an issue really until this year. So, um, so if you look at the, the second um, page of the submission is a uh, boundary plan. And um, that shows where the, the house sits on the lot. It also notifies the um, 2550 and, uh, or 2575 and 100 feet uh, from the high water mark. And you can see where our septic system is um, on the plan. I don't know if you have any questions about the plan itself. I need, I need better glasses, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I probably need like a, a drawing four times the size to see exactly. If there's anything you have questions on, I'm glad to point out for you. Is the septic field the little red field, the little red box to the lower yeah, right? Yeah, if you don't mind, I'll share. So this is, this is the tank. Okay. And there's a pump right there. And then the system that's is the up field. in the corner. And the pump is crossing like a little bit of a wetland there. No, that's the pavement. Okay. Yeah. And this is the this is the water line there. Okay. I'm good. All right. I think I think I swim by this house almost every day in the summertime. So. Do you really? <laughs> yeah, I, that's right there by the cove, right? I'd probably yeah. wave to you. <laughs> okay. Um, next page. Um, so, uh, due to the unusually uh, rainy weather this year. 
we've had quite a bit of trouble with uh, flooding. Um, the most devastating uh, damage we had was in August, and um, it, it completely destroyed the, uh, the finished basement and the bedrooms downstairs. We do have uh, sump in the basement with two pumps, and for 19 years that's kept up with it, but this year we've actually been hit three times. We got hit in August, December, and January, and um, so as a result, we don't, we don't have any legal bedrooms right now because we had to gut everything downstairs. Fortunately, we didn't start rebuilding it because again, we just keep getting hit with floods. Um, so that's really the reason why we're asking for the, for the variance. Now, I'd like to get the bedrooms out of the basement. I just don't think it's safe. Um, next page, please. Tammy, Tammy had asked me to, uh, to try to illustrate the root cause. Um, so I know it's kind of obvious, but the, uh, the high lake water and groundwater is really what's caused uh, the flooding. Um, Pretty obvious from the pictures, my neighbors, the first picture was from August. You can see the water is well under my neighbor's uh, house. And even now, the, the lake is really high. I'm sure the, the weather we've had the last uh, today isn't gonna help either. So. so, you know, we're trying to plan for the future with the house. And so we're trying to find a way to, uh, to have some Bedrooms that we don't have to worry about flooding, worried about the moisture uh, in the in the uh, basement. Uh, next page, please. So if you know the lake, which sounds like you do, you know that um, Crystal Lake is a mixture of single and two-story homes around the uh, around the lake. What I've highlighted on this drawing are the um, houses that are closest to me. I'm 107-19, uh, uh, that are two-story. Uh, next page. These are the pictures of those homes that are noted by the, uh, by the lot numbers. So there's a, there's a fair amount of two-story homes. And you know, really what we're talking about doing is something in keeping with these houses. We're not trying to do something you know, ridiculous. We just want to be able to to move the bedrooms upstairs. Uh, next page. So we've, we've talked to an architect um, briefly to, to see what kinds of ideas we can come up with. We haven't gotten too far because we really need to know how high we can make the roof to be able to do it. Um, there's a mock-up that I put there. The right-hand picture is, is a suggestion for what it might look like. Just something functional. So this is the lakeside uh, picture. The next page is, would be the, um, the roadside picture. Do you have more pages than we do? <laughs> no. No, no, we're, I'm, I'm following okay. you. You're good. Yeah, yeah sorry. No, you're fine. Yeah, okay, yeah, so you're good. No, I thought you yeah, said the next good. page. No, no, he did, no, you're good. He, he, we're on the same page. It was a lakeside shot. And no, yeah, we're on the, no, you're on the road shot. No, you're good. Yeah. I mean, when you said the page, I was totally thrown off. <laughs> <laughs> so, in the last page, just, just in summary, um, you know, we, we're just looking to, uh, to do something with the house. You know, my wife and I would like to retire there. Um, hopefully in the not too distant future, and uh, having uh, bedrooms that we don't have to worry about the flooding or the, uh, the health issues with having moisture in the basement is really our goal. And uh, whatever we do is, is something we want to have it in keeping with the homes that are around us. And um, I think we can do that. We just need a little bit more uh, headroom to, uh, to do like a Cape style dormer uh, roof like our neighbors have. Anybody have any questions? Yeah. Not at the moment, no. I have a conceptual question we're going to say when sure. I swim by these. Is the lot, um, let's look at it. The 10716 lot, 
this. I'm looking at the, like page one, two, three, page five. I think it is. It's the one zero seven sixteen. Yeah, neighboring two story homes. Yep. Is the one zero seven sixteen? Is that the camp that has the like little cabin? That it's, the one, it's the first. It's the first place next to the uh, public beach. Okay, so it's the one with the cab, the little white cab and bunkhouse. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, these maybe know better than you. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jane, Jane lives next door. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Now, and your lot was nineteen, correct? Yes. Are you the one with the fence, or is that lot yes. twenty? Which well, there's two fences. Okay. Which one? Well, there's a, there's like a a. Um, Stockade type fence with a fire pit. Uh, that's my neighbor. Okay, so they're 20. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's Gary Marchand. I just want to make sure that I look at yeah, the right yeah, house yeah. when I do this. Because, like I say, I swim by there every day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, in essence, you're looking to build eight feet higher than the current zoning allows for. Yeah, and look, I, I haven't been able to get too deep with an architect to know if that's too much or if I can do it shorter. I'm certainly glad to consider doing it less if I can. Um, but I, I don't know. I'm not an architect, so I don't know how much spa extra space that they might need. Okay. So it's, a, it's an estimate. Do you have any idea or concept or thought on the height? of the two-story camps on the other four lots? Uh, are they a full two-story two camp? I know that 107 is not a, it's like a big dormer on the back. Oh, Gary's? That camp, yeah. Well, I mean, you can see in the pictures, um, I mean, there's, there's full rooms up there. I know that. Yeah, 10716 is the bunkhouse one. Yeah. Okay. And 10720 looks. Yeah, really those tall. look like full bedrooms above. Okay. Which is what we're shooting for. I tried to get a tape measure and measure their peaks, and I couldn't get the thing to stay up there so I could grab the peak. Isn't there a way the Boy Scouts did that with, like, you know, it's a sh shadow of the, the sun and you stand <laughs> a certain distance away and hold right. your foot? That is way beyond my ability. <laughs> I'm sorry. If I had, if I had to guess, I, mean, I would guess they're somewhere between 25 and 28 feet. Because I, well, actually, so, so let me step back for a second. Part of the reason why they're a little bit lower is because they don't have a foundation. So that's why I was pointing out the height of my first floor. So I'm starting at five feet off the ground with the, my flooring for my kitchen. And so that's what kills me. Because now I need to go up. I go up from there. Okay. I think I can, you know, Somewhere between, I can definitely get it in with 28. I could probably get it in a little bit less than that. I just don't know until I pay an architect to do the design. And the O'Donohue's are lot. Um, they're next door. They are lot uh, 18. 18. And actually, Jane is lot 17. And those are both single level homes. Yes. Okay. Yes. And we don't have any issues. <laughs> we encourage the people. Okay, that's cool. We'll, we'll hear you at public comments then. How's that sound? Okay. Okay, does anybody have any public comments <laughs> that they would like to make? <laughs> Okay, would you step up to the podium and let us know who you are and if you can, what house lot number issue is. Oh, I don't know house lot number. Sure. I could give you my address. Though. I'm Jane Norton. I own 36 North Raymond Road. Lot 17. Lot 17. Okay. So, just to give you a history of Mark's wife has been coming to the lake since I was 13 years old. My grandmother and her sister bought 
these places in the 40s. My dad was a camp counselor at Camp Gregory. So they're not people coming up and just fly by night people trying to expand on the lake. They're very much part of a family that is three houses there. And um, I've seen the devastation of their basement. I was the one who went in. I take pictures for them after the storms and stuff. And it's really been hard. And I know for my own house, my septic tank went underwater this summer. So it's, it, it is unprecedented, but apparently, according to everything I hear, we need to plan for stuff like this in the future. And um, so I just, I, I encourage you guys to accept their variance because they've got an amazing family. All of their kids and grandkids love coming up. They're very, um, I don't know, I think we've all been very good citizens of the lake. And, you know, no one's trying to take advantage of anyone. It, they just got put in a situation that's unfortunate. And, you know, hopefully they can do what they're intending to do. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else from the public? Well, not from the public, but I wanted to let you know that there was a lady that called me earlier that was unable to attend the meeting tonight, and she did give you, she did submit something in writing, and she wanted to make sure that I received it to know that you had received it, which I believe is another one of his neighbors. It's a um, Dorothy and Ed Donahue. Mm -hmm. okay. Is that the more we got? That's yes, that's the one that you have. I just wanted okay. to make sure that you knew that that was applicable to his request. Do we know what lot the Donahues are? Yes. 20. Oh, we already asked you that. Yeah. Uh, 18. Okay. Anybody else from the public? Take a look at the criteria. We're going to take a look at the criteria now. Okay. So, as the landing question cannot, <laughs> excuse me, cannot yield a reasonable return unless a variance is granted. I'm sorry. Is that a, a is that a question for me? No, I'm, I'm reading what oh, the okay. criteria is. It says okay. the this is this is actually the most difficult criteria to get over, if you will. Yeah. Discussion on that. No, the pictures pretty well show the devastation. You'll speak out loud. Uh, yeah, oh. I, I got some, I got something to say. Go ahead. Um, just reading the question as is, it says the does the land in question, right? It's not really saying the property or the house. Yeah, it's saying the land in question it's cannot return you, you can't read a re reasonable return one of my first ZBA meetings I actually came across this and I personally have been on a hunt to find actually an example of, of this actually being able to be granted because that's a very tough question definitely in 2024 right more than ever um, one thing I did find out, and I don't, and this is where this is maybe open to discussion a little bit. One thing I did talk to, training, whatever. I asked this exact question, and one thing that did come up was erosion. I believe they said that as an example. I don't know if flooding falls under that sort of category, um, but that's one thing I'm kind of, I don't want to say nervous, because yes, I agree. I think your house, you know definitely lost value but has the land and as a shoreline I think you kind of run into that a little bit but I agree I think you should be able to build your space here um, but like the chair said um, there is a criteria and the hardship variance is one of the hardest ones to sure. to follow that criteria but what do you think about that of that what I said about the erosion and does that is that comparable in that example or no as you can tell, he's the he's he's the boss, man. He know he's the chair for the reason. 
I would say that there's certainly been some extremely difficult cases. I mean, like the Supreme Judicial Court once ruled out on Fly Island that a land that was not the proper lot size uh, could still yield a valuable return even if they just put a fire pit on it. <laughs> I, I, I kid you not. I kid you not. There have only been, I think, three cases that have ever gone to the Supreme Judicial Court that have ruled, you know, so drastically. But what we have here is we have a an older lake that probably for a hundred years has had very small lots and very small camps. Mm -hmm. And there are those years that it's a dry lake and people go over to Crystal, over to Wilkie's Beach and say, where's the water? Mm -hmm. And this past summer, I said, my God, it's still August and go, going into September. And, I, and I'm up to my waist only like eight feet off the beach. So there was an exorbitantly large amount of water. So the weather and the water and the flooding is totally unpredictable. But what we seem to have, though, is a, a piece of land that if it were to go on the open market tomorrow, and I'm not a realtor, but I have to think that the first thing that would come into my mind as a seller is the flood or the flooding capabilities or uh, the sure. fact that the water is right there and if it rains or if we get too much ice buildup, it's going to flood. Or if suddenly a uh, dry lake becomes dry again, I'm going to have useless beachfront, beachfront property that I can't use or develop. And, and uh, I may have to drag my kayak. You have kayaks, right? Or, mm -hmm. Yeah, that uh, I may have to drive drive my kayak, you know, a hundred extra feet uh, before it's usable. So I I think that I would seriously I seriously doubt, in my opinion, that the land in its current state, subject to flooding, uh, not only from the lake but from the street, because I mean that could happen there especially the little stream that runs out behind, yeah. um, that uh, it might not be able to retain the value that it, it currently has. Uh, and again, you know, mowing that section of the lake. Uh, this man the, swims the lake, he knows. <laughs> <laughs> he knows well, the deep well, spots. Even, even from <laughs> jo when Jody used to live in the little uh, blue place, right? Yeah, over towards... Yeah, Denver. over towards... Uh, the Gregory, Camp Gregory Beach. Gregory. Um, highs and lows. Yeah. And if the property were to be left the way it is today, knowing the value of camps is exceedingly high, regardless of the size of the lot, that I don't think that they could get a reasonable return on the property, even as it is now. I was hoping you would say that because I, I, <laughs> I, you know, because I was, because I know personally that is that is one of the hardest questions to overcome. Yeah. Personally, so. well, then I would make the mo any comment. I would make the motion that the land in question cannot yield a reasonable return unless the variance is granted Georgia. for the reasons discussed. Georgia Woodbury, I second the motion. Any comment or discussion? No. Anybody? All those in favor of letter A is unanimous. Now let's look at letter B, that the need for the variance is due to the unique, <laughs> excuse me, is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general conditions in the neighborhood. Discussion? No, the, the photos and the discussion has pretty well showed that. I, I would agree. But yeah. And just so it's you know on video or recorded somewhere, I would have to say that, again, it's a very old neighborhood. It's a, it's a kind of a cramped neighborhood. There's absolutely no way to expand away from the water reasonably without getting more variances. And, and very honestly, in that section, cutting down trees. Yep. And the last thing that people in that neighborhood want or even along North Raymond Road, is to cut down trees unless it's absolutely necessary. 
I think that all the camp properties, very honestly, are unique in that situation, uh, especially on that small lake. And they're not asking to expand the septic. They're not asking to create more need for septic. It's I need to move my two bedrooms into a usable spot. Right. So I would make the motion that the need for a variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general conditions in the neighborhood. Again, because it can flood at any time or it can dry out at any time. Um, is there a second? Derek Shirley. Uh, I second the motion. Fog motion, Shirley seconds. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Uh, Grant, oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Uh, see, uh, that granting the of a variance will not alter the es essential character of locality. Again, being familiar with that, uh, there are houses across the street to the rear of the lot. But as I see, I'm going to say as I ride my bicycle over there. <laughs> You're a busy guy. He spends a lot of well, time there. So I get to swim around the lake. I get to bike around the lake. Yeah. What are you doing your Iron Man? That, uh, <laughs> You're brave to bike on that road. Yeah, right? tough road. Riding my bike on there, if I go to look at the lake, I can't see it anyway except where there are openings between camps. And the structures on the opposite side of the road are all either one story and have limited, if any, visibility of the lake. And the two-story structures are up the road a little bit. And even then, because they sit so far back and there's so many trees, that they already have limited visibility of the lake. So I don't think that we're taking anybody's view of the lake away. I mean, that, that's my two cents worth. You want to make that a motion? Yeah. Uh, I motion. What, what is it? That the granting of the variance will not alter the essential character of the locality. Yes. I motion that. Is there a second? Georgia Woodbury, I second. I mean, all the camps there now are really pretty much the way they are. I mean, nothing's out of line in what they're asking. All those in favor? It's unanimous. And Georgia Woodbury, I move that the hardship is not the result of action taken by the applicant or a private or prior owner. I second that. Discussion? Unless he's Poseidon. <laughs> really, unless he is, is, has some uh, unearthly powers. They have absolutely no control of, of the weather, of whether the lake rises or falls. I would agree. Any other comments? All those in favor? It's unanimous. Now the main motion. I would move that Mark and Mary Bourgeois be granted a variance appeal to increase 20 feet of allowed structure height to 28 feet at the structure located at 32 North Raymond Road, Gray, Maine, tax map 013-107. Zero one nine zero zero zero, which is located in a limited residential and shoreland zone. Is there a second? Georgia Woodbury, I second the motion. Any discussion from the board? Any discussion from the public? Any input from the public? Seeing none, all those in favor? It's unanimous. Sometime in the next seven days, the zoning board, the office will draw up a document for uh, signature, and you want to check with them like next Thursday or Friday to see if it's ready. It should be ready. A lot of okay. okay. Thank you very much. Sure thing. 
Good luck with the water. <laughs> Is there any other new public hearings scheduled? Other new business? which should be on the agenda, and that'll be a correction for the next month. We have a couple of items. Uh, one, to be aware that you have before you the communication and social media policy, and we received an email, I believe it was two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, cautioning us on how we use our email, and that said email should not be used for anything other than the business of the town or the Zoning Board of Appeals specifically. Uh, it shouldn't be used for personal use. We shouldn't be soliciting anything on it. We shouldn't be uh, forwarding documents that we didn't originate. Uh, the old saying goes, if you don't want to see it on the front page of the Portland Press Herald, then don't write it in an email. Because all the emails that we send as board members or town employees or volunteers for the town doing business at the town those are all public documents and are subject to FOIA requests. So if the general public wants those, they can get those. So uh, be cautious and be careful uh, with that. Uh, and we'll go over that more, I think, in a workshop. Uh, yeah, correct. We, and I, I also plan. I want to add that that email came out of advice out of a different situation, but it's also important to, to, to note that you know, we can't control what the public's going to do. The public can email anybody that they want, even though I can say, well, Brad won't respond to you. They have the right to email all three of you day and night if they choose to. It's important to understand that because out of the forum and not having, you know, being collectively as a board to not to respond to those emails and not have outside communications regarding upcoming appeals with the public. I mean, this is the process that we need to have that happen in. And the reason why I passed along the email was because it had nothing to do with this board. It had to do with a different board in a pretty uh, litigious situation that we're in. But I thought, you know what, this is from our attorney. It's really good advice. And I want to pass that along to my board members um, because that was being given to other board members um, that are not on this board. And in addition to that, if Citizen Jones sends an email to all members of the Zoning Board of Appeals seeking a response that each one of us may have a different opinion, so we should not be responding to that because then we put ourselves in conflict with each other before we even really know what's going on. So we want to make sure that anything that is sent unsolicited to us or not relevant to something that we're actually dealing with, we, we shouldn't respond to that, or we can refer it uh, to Tammy, uh, or for that matter, the town manager's office, because we literally work under the auspices of the town manager as a, or the town council as a committee. So we don't want to overstep our bounds and we don't want to put anybody in conflict. And again, uh, trying to avoid any type of litigation. I mean, we are a fair and impartial a board that uh, mediates openly uh, all of our decisions, and we want to keep it that way. Right, and, and, and like I said, I mean, and all of you have had, since you've been on the board, you know, you've seen some, quite a bit go on in this room. You've seen your share of attorneys, and you know, anybody can email and get you to bite or, you know, try to agitate you or anything like that. And it can compromise your position even sitting in the room, and, and I would not want to see that happen to anybody. So I just thought it was important enough to pass along to all of you and then go over the email policy. It wasn't directed at you, it didn't have anything to do with this, but it was good advice, and so I thought, well, this is a good opportunity to, to take that, to discuss that. And the other thing we have uh, just to discuss briefly is that um, the town's um, corporate council, which is Petrie, it's Jensen Baird. Jen, Jensen Baird, excuse me. Um, will offer to us at no cost to the town uh, one and a half to two hour training on Zoning Board of Appeals, which is will be limited to Zoning Board of Appeals and not you know, dealing with the planning board requirements and, and stuff like this. So 
do we want to do that on a night that we don't have anything scheduled or do we want to do it in a workshop on a night prior to something that's scheduled or I guess I would look for your feedback uh, on that because I'm not sure that I'm not sure that I'd want to be here for four hours some night. But no. Yeah, and I, and I just want to let the, the other two members, I know Brad and I briefly discussed this. Um, the Like he said, we're entitled to one free training a year. This is by our attorneys. It would be specific to, 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 the, to the four of you. This is your training. And... Um, one of the staff attorneys already has the training all done up. It's already, you know, they do it for other municipalities. It's a, it's a service they perform. You know, he said 60 minutes is pushing it. 90 is better. But um, I want to make sure that, that all of you have ample amount of opportunity to ask questions. You've never really been in a training setting that's been specific to ZBA dedicated to the town of Gray. Um, so I personally would like to see possibly a two-hour time slot without a meeting scheduled after so that we're not limited and crunched and have it be on a night that could be dedicated just to that. Yeah. I mean, so it doesn't have to be on a Wednesday. So if, if, let's say, Brad and Derek couldn't make a Wednesday or we could do it like on a Thursday when nothing else is planned, I mean, so we're not limited to a specific day? Correct, because if we have to... We could hold it at the library because if it's a work, it's a, still a public meeting. It still has to be taped. So you know, plan a board meetings a lot of times are in here on Thursdays. We don't have to do it here as long as we have it in a space where it can be recorded and be open to the public if they wish to attend. It could be held at the library. Okay. Well, uh, let's do this. Why don't you get back to me to say what day would work? I mean, it doesn't have to be on a Wednesday, or it could be on a Wednesday. Right. What I'm going to do is I'm going it could to be, conceive it could be the second Wednesday of a month. Correct. Uh, month. Our the attorney that's going to do it is pretty busy. I think to, until towards the end of March, there's going to be a small window where he's available pretty much to do it. Almost, you know, he has it open, and then he's going out on a leave. So um, I, what I'm going to do is I'm just asking that because mm -hmm. <clears throat> I know most of you, a lot of you probably don't check your emails on a weekly or, e or basis, but if you could pay attention a little bit more because he's going to have some dates that are going to be available and I'm going to have to try to do this via email with the whole board of seeing how we can lock this down because we still have to do um, noticing because I, it is I, a public I would meeting. like to throw out because we normally meet on the fourth Wednesday of the month. I'd like to throw out the third Wednesday of April. That's after school vacation. Uh, it gives people you know, two months to plan. So. Um, One, two, seven would be the 17th. The 17th of April. Let me just write down. Is April 17th? Week? Huh? Is it school vacation week? I don't Does know. Does it affect anybody on the board school vacation? No, no, I was just checking. The April 17th? I just want to write that down. What's initially planned for April 17th? I'll check with Anthony. Actually, in the state of Maine, that's the last day to file your taxes. <laughs> I did see that email come across. April the 17th, right? Yeah. Well, write it down. Yeah, April, <laughs> April 17th, if you would send an email out to each one of the board members through your office, uh, we'll get that all confirmed. And if by chance there is something in April, we're not piggybacking. Uh, and we may have more information on the 17th that we might need for the 23rd. You never know. Or the 24th. Right. And so I, what I will do is I will see if um, um, what his availability is. I think that the other thing, possibility, would be to, I believe the deadline for an application for March's meeting, I don't remember if I have an application for a variance for next month. So I could see if he's available to do it the night of our regular meeting. It would be a workshop rather than a hearing. That would be as ideal. Long as that would be ideal. Yeah. But let me let me get back to you on that. I will email you guys. The fourth All Wednesday in March, if there is no appeals. Well, if we'll there do it no then. Appeals. Yep. Otherwise, the third Wednesday of April. Sounds good. That sounds good. Okay. Yeah, and the only other thing that we had was the discussion around teams, which we've already had. I want pepperoni, by the way. Oh, you want? I know. I, all right. Okay. So we let my secret out. 
I said, you know, I said, I want to do this. I, so I said, this is what I said. I said, I want to do this on a night when we don't have anything else <clears throat> so that, you know, we could like maybe get here a little early. You know, I could get pizzas for the board members and just like, is like an appreciation type thing. And, you know, we could have eat dinner together and do our training together. And, but he ruined my surprise. <laughs> Is there any other business before the board tonight? Georgia Woodbury, I'm not, not that I'm aware of. Is there a motion to adjourn? I motion, Derek Shirley motions to adjourn. Without objection, we are adjourned at uh, 7.56. Thank you very much. <laughs>